In 1977, Apple, Commodore, and Tandy each released fully assembled home computers. Prior to their release, commercially available computers all came in kit form and required a bit of technical knowledge to assemble. These three computers were different. They were fully assembled and had an appeal beyond the hobbyist market. They began the computer revolution that led us to where we are now. But what is more interesting is that one of the companies, Tandy, was a leather retailer and somehow found itself at the forefront of an industry that would grow to be worth billions in just a few short years. Despite the boom that followed after the release of the 1977 Trinity, the only surviving member of the Trinity is Apple. In an alternate universe, Radio Shack would rule the world, supplying all of your electronics needs from computers to cell phones and even making them through its parent company Tandy. But unfortunately in this world, Radio Shack is a bankrupt company whose pioneering Tandy home computers have long been forgotten. Tandy found itself at the forefront of the home computer revolution, releasing one of the first ever mass-produced home computers and yet failed to win the home computer wars. This is the story of Tandy and Radio Shack's home computers and how a retail corporation found itself at the heart of the computer revolution. The story of the Tandy Radio Shack Corporation, or TRS for short, begins with Tandy. Tandy was founded in 1919 as a leather supply store. In the 1960s, aiming to broaden the company horizon, Tandy acquired a number of craft retail companies, including Radio Shack in 1963, to form the Tandy Radio Shack Corporation. Radio Shack was a radio parts and electronics store founded in 1921. At the time of its acquisition, Radio Shack had only 9 stores, but it quickly expanded to become a hobbyist dream. It had all types of electronics and it didn't only cater to the DIY crowd, but also to anyone in search of the coolest and latest gadgets. In the early 1970s, a Tandy employee by the name Don French had purchased a Mitz Alte kit computer that he assembled. He immediately began designing his own computers. He showed his designs for a home computer to the vice president of manufacturing at Tandy, John V. Rauch. Although the design did not impress Rauch, the idea of selling a microcomputer did. When the two men visited a company called National Semiconductor in California in mid-1976, Homebrew Computer Club member Steve Leninger's expertise on microprocessors impressed them. Leninger was unhappy at National Semiconductor. So he agreed to be hired by Tandy for his technical and retail experience. Tandy at the time owned a chain of 3,000 Radio Shack stores. These stores provided Tandy with a customer base of 11 million shoppers that might buy a microcomputer. But a microcomputer would be way more expensive than the $30 median price of a Radio Shack product. In December 1976, French and Leninger received official approval for the project but were told to emphasize cost savings. In February 1977, they showed their prototype running a simple tax accounting program to Charles Tandy, head of Tandy Corporation. The program quickly crashed as the computer's implementation of Tiny Basic could not handle the $150,000 figure that Tandy typed in as his salary. So the two men added support for floating point math to its level 1 basic to prevent a recurrence. When Charles Tandy asked who would buy the computer Tandy was making, company president Louis Kornfeld admitted that he did not know if anyone would. Kornfeld suggested that 1,000 to 3,000 computers could be sold per year. 3,000 incidentally was the quantity the company would have to produce to buy the components in bulk. In the summer of 1977, Radio Shack introduced the TRS-80 for $599. This offering included a basic language interpreter, 4 kilobytes of RAM, a Zilog Z80 processor, a 12-inch video monitor, a cassette recorder, and a cassette tape containing the games Blackjack and Backgammon. The availability of the TRS-80 on 5,000 Radio Shack store shelves helped the TRS-80 sell over 100,000 units during its first year, which was 50% of the total home computers sold in 1978. Tandy had not only found itself at the inception of the computer revolution, 
but was now also the market leader. Time. Strategy. Tactics. After the success of the TRS-80 among computer enthusiasts and the general public, Tandy decided that they wanted to make a sophisticated machine for the business market. Their first attempt at a business machine was the Tandy 10 business computer system, released in 1978. The computer itself was about the size of a two-drawer filing cabinet with a monitor and keyboard built into a desk-shaped console. The machine was originally designed to be a data entry system and not a standalone computer. But since the machine had a microprocessor, Tandy added accounting software to it and attempted to market it as a business computer. The machine was priced at a jaw-dropping price of $8,995 or upwards of $37,000 in today's money. The machine did not sell in large numbers and was quickly discontinued. Tandy's next attempt at a business computer was a lot more sensible. Tandy recognized that there was strong demand for the original TRS-80 from business users, but the machine was too limited for business use. So in 1978, Tandy began development on the TRS-80 Model 2, specifically to target business users. It was released in 1979 at a price tag of $3,450 for the base level model. The Model 2 was not compatible with the Model 1 and never had the same breadth of available software. Other models were released as part of the TRS line of computers, but none were ever as popular as the original TRS-80. The problem that plagued the TRS line of computers was their name. The computers themselves were good machines. InfoWorld went as far as to call the Model 2 a well-designed, capable business system, but its name had given it somewhat of a negative distinction. Firstly, the fact that the name included Radio Shack in it made it difficult for professional and business users to take the machine seriously. And secondly, the TRS-80 computers had been nicknamed quite unfairly as Trash-80. The negative connotations surrounding the TRS computer line were so bad that future computers stopped using that name altogether. Tandy went as far as to remove the name Radio Shack from its future computer names. They no longer wanted their computers to be associated with Radio Shack. Fletcher saved $300 on her office away from the office. Radio Shack's revolutionary Model 100 computer. It's a word processor, phone directory, and dialer. Sales of Tandy's computers peaked in 1980, with the computers having a market share as high as 60% at some point. But in the wake of increasing competition, sales began to decline. Seeing their declining home computer sales, Tandy decided to focus attention elsewhere. In the 1980s, a company called Kyocera released a portable computer called the Kyotronic 85. Sales for the computer started off slow. At the time, Tandy was seeking to enter the emerging portable computers market and decided to purchase the rights to the portable computer. They renamed it the Tandy Terrace 80 Model 100. Unlike its competition, it had a well-designed user interface and a ton of functionality. It had an integrated software suite provided by Microsoft, featuring the last code that Bill Gates ever wrote himself. It let you process words, manage your schedule, and keep an address book right out of the box. The system was initially popular with journalists, which probably helped Tandy and Radio Shack improve the company's poor reputation with the press. The Model 100 is widely regarded as the first successful laptop, selling over 6 million units worldwide. The successor to the Model 100 was the TRS-80 Model 200, later known as the Tandy 200. The Tandy 200 had 24 kilobytes of RAM, a flip-up display, and a spreadsheet included. Although less popular than the Model 100, the Tandy 200 was particularly popular with journalists in the late 1980s and early 1990s. If you could only have one computer, one personal computer for home use, one computer that can run thousands of MS-DOS programs used in business and education, one personal computer expandable for more powerful applications. After experiencing some success in the portable computer market, Tandy turned its attention back to the home computer market, releasing the MC10. It was a low-cost alternative to Tandy's own TRS-80 color computer 
to compete with entry-level machines. It was not a commercial success and was discontinued only a year after its introduction. But to blame Tandy for the MC-10 being a commercial failure is a little bit unfair. It was up against the massively popular Sinclair ZX81 and Commodore VIC-20 computers which went on to sell more than a million units. By the time Tandy was thinking of releasing its next computer, the computer industry was undergoing some pretty seismic shifts. Gone were the golden days of thousands of different PCs each with their different libraries of compatible software and unique internal hardware. Things had changed, IBM had entered the market and instantly set the standard for what a home computer is. Now the goal of most of the computer industry was not to be the best home computer but to be the best IBM clone. So in response to IBM's entry into the home computer market, Tandy created its own IBM compatible computers. The first of these computers was the Tandy 2000. The problem with the Tandy 2000 was that it wasn't fully compatible with the IBM PC. Tandy aimed to improve on that with the Tandy 1000, which was marketed as highly compatible with IBM PCs. It was actually designed to be an enhanced IBM PC Junior compatible computer but the timing was bad for Tandy. IBM discontinued the unsuccessful PC Junior shortly before the Tandy 1000 was scheduled for introduction. Despite this unfortunate turn, the Tandy 1000 was well received and was succeeded by multiple other Tandy 1000 models. But despite the success of the Tandy 1000 models, Tandy began experiencing falling profits and increased competition from new home computer companies like Dell. Tandy decided not to manufacture any new models of PCs after the Tandy 1000 line of computers. It's important to note, much of Tandy and Radio Shack's line of computers were manufactured in the company's own factories. In addition to this, they were building computers for other companies such as Digital Equipment Corporation, Grid Systems, Olivetti, AST Computer, Panasonic, and many others. This meant that by the early 90s, the company was the world's biggest manufacturer of personal computers. But the problem with the Tandy Radio Shack Corporation was its business strategy. Radio Shack only stored and sold their computers and didn't sell ones made by their competitors. This hurt Radio Shack's business in three ways. Firstly, they couldn't profit from the sale of competing companies. If a customer decided against buying a TRS or Tandy computer but still ended up buying a different computer in the store, Radio Shack would still be profiting from the sales of their competitors. Secondly, when people bought home computers, they tended to also buy software and accessory hardware for their computers. By not carrying other computer brands, Radio Shack completely missed out on this market. Thirdly, they missed out on sales of their own computer. If Radio Shack sold other home computers alongside its own computers, employees could persuade a customer that would have otherwise bought a different home computer to buy a Tandy computer instead. Remember, Tandy's computers weren't too different from their competitors. In the late 80s and early 90s, Tandy computers were essentially poorly made IBM clones. Tandy was competing with dozens of other home computers and relied on convincing customers that their computers either had better performance or were cheaper than their competitors. By not placing their computers next to competing machines, consumers had no way to know if they were making the best choice. The negative consequences of Tandy's business strategy meant Radio Shack stores and Tandy computers started declining in profitability in the early 90s. As a result, Tandy sold off its computer manufacturing business in 1993 and phased out its computer business. And that marked the end of the TRS and Tandy computers, putting an end to a computer company that once owned half the computer market but ended up losing the entire computer market. Now we have it for the record, on the record, however you want to say it, Radio Shack has filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection under the U.S. Bankruptcy Code.